Hello, my name is Ian Nish, and I'm an adaptive phycologist, a seaweed farmer. I come from Nova Scotia in Canada, and I've spent my entire life since I was a kid working in small boats on in, in inshore waters around the world. I've been working in uh, Southeast Asia now for more than 40 years. Now, there are a, a lot of interesting boats out here, but a lot of them are not very seaworthy and are not capable of the kind of work that needs to be done on our seaweed farms. So for a long time, I've been looking for a vessel would fit into our farming operations. And I came across what I think will be an excellent choice on the website of Jeff Spira and you're looking at the home page of that here. Now I zeroed in on the uh, Garvey Dories and uh, the largest one available at the time that I ordered <coughs> was the Pucci Special. So this is what I picked. And this is uh, how the, uh, the concept drawing looks for it. And this is what the study plan looks like. So I ordered a set of plans I converted them to metric because that's what everybody uses here. Well, and in most of the world outside the USA. And I also stretched the boat 10%. So and it would have an, a length overall of about eight meters. Now I see that Jeff has another larger uh, Garvey Dory model that's about this size as well. Anyway, so I want to discuss a bit about how does this boat fit into the Valley Sea fishing, aquaculture, and seaweed farming scene that we operate in. This is our seaweed processing factory in Bali. And uh, on the ground you can see some of our material drying under the sun. And we are surrounded by shrimp farms. This factory has just commenced operation recently. It is located a couple of hundred meters from an ocean foreshore where there are uh, pearl oyster farms, there are fish farms, there's all kinds of fishing going on, and here is the anchorage for our boats. In Bali there are thousands upon thousands of these small dugout boats called jukung. They have outriggers. A lot of them are fiberglass nowadays. And uh, a lot of uh, people enjoy racing these around Bali Strait. Uh, these are not really work boats. These guys are out having fun on, on a weekend. This guy on the other hand is using his jukung for his seaweed farm. This guy's a pretty good sailor with that crab claw sail and uh, he is towing a canoe loaded with seaweed that is heading out to the farm to be planted. But this is how we want to farm. This is our mother ship, the Sea Combine 1, which we had fabricated in Bali a couple of years ago. And that boat, as well as the Secotech boat that we're here to discuss, 
Its mission is to handle what we call ladder rats, seaweed rats, such as the ones that are shown here. And down below you see a jukung working the rafts with its outriggers getting in the way. So, along the, uh, the shorelines of the Bali Strait, there are uh, many kilometers of this type of seaweed farm. And they produce a good income for local people. But we want to introduce a certain amount of uh, mechanization that reduces the drudge labor involved in seaweed farming by use of equipment such as the harvester that you just saw and uh, this planting machine. Machines like this will go on the Secotech boat that we just built. So we move on to construction of the Secotech boat. Here you see our uh, boat builder who is known as Chuck, checking uh, timber that has uh, just arrived for construction of the boat. Uh, note that this is teak. Uh, teak wood is farmed in Indonesia, not too far from where we built this boat. Now the stock does not arrive already cut to dimensions, so it's necessary to make your own two by fours or whatever it is that you need. Here we have the strong back going up, ready to get moving on setting up the frames that Chuck has already been building. Here the keelson has been installed and the shear clamps and chine lab logs are going on. Transom in position and plywood is starting to get laid to the bottom of the boat as well as being put on the sides and trimmed. We need some big hinges for that large bow door, so these have already been fabricated at this point. And the fiberglass starts to go on with the epoxy. We, in this case, we couldn't get the six ounce cloth that is recommended by Jeff Spira, uh, instead, we used uh, a layer of mat and a layer of roving on the bottom. And we just used roving on the sides. Here, uh, everything is being trimmed and sanded. We're laying some rub strips on the bottom of the boat. Coat of paint. Uh, just prior to flipping the boat. <clears throat> Here we have a cradle with some wheels on it that is uh, to be used on flipping day. And here is the boat hanging in the air, ready to flip. The flipping process was accomplished with the use of a single two-ton chain block. Here we have the hull already suspended above the strong back, uh, ready for action. So we remove the strong back and set that aside for the next boat and uh, starting to roll her over. Here she's on the cradle, a little uh, iffy there, but it came out okay. You see that the boat builder is kind of relieved at that. <laughs> and the hull settles down on the wheel cradle for further action. So here we get our first look at the boat in an upright position, ready for interior finishing. At the same time, we pick up our brand new Yamaha 40 horsepower two-stroke motor. We uh, frame in uh, the transom area where that will go shortly. And we start to lay the deck as well as the, the bulkheads. These are totally sealed in FRP roving and uh, epoxy. Uh, here we see the motor in place. And uh, Chuck putting the steps on the transom to make it easier for old guys like me to climb into this boat. 
Uh, here Chuck is uh, working on uh, the bow door, testing it for action. And then we see final paint going on prior to the launch. So after seven weeks of building, the boat is finally ready to head off over some rough terrain to the sea. This was accomplished by a lot of enthusiastic guys who did a lot of show down the way. So we're on the beach getting ready to try this boat for the first time. This bow door rig is a temporary one. We have uh, chain blocks that are going in there. The bow door needs to be very strong because we are using it as a work platform, not just a way uh, as a way of getting on and off the boat. So here we are pulling up the bow door by its uh, temporary ropes. As we get ready and fire up the engine for the very first time, which it does in about three pulls. It turned out that that little 40 horse motor drove the boat along very nicely at a cruising speed of 30 to 35 kilometers per hour. So here I am ending another day at the office. You can see that this boat gets up in planes very readily. Jeff Spira definitely got the curvature of the bottom uh, exactly right on this boat. And uh, it's a fairly sizable boat for a 40 horse motor, but it moves along really well. We still have some work to do before our sea tech boats are ready to take the place of the types of uh, vessel that you see in the picture below. Uh, to begin with, we're installing a top to ward off the sun and the rain, something light along the lines of a binny top. Secondly, we must properly rig the bow door slash work platform because not only will we be rolling uh, loads of up to a ton across this bow door, but it must also uh, be extended for use as a work platform when we are out tending the farm. So we're going to do a shakedown cruise around farm locations within the next couple of weeks. Then uh, we're going to do a weight and balance test. And finally, we're going to install and operate the C-Combine machinery 
that enables us to mechanize seaweed farming. So stay tuned.